a great honor to speak at Money 2020. My dear departed father, whom some of the old timers here might remember from the financial industry, Jack Byrne, used to say that every putt makes somebody happy and somebody sad. Uh, I'm going to be putting a bit today. I hope it makes more people happy than sad. Uh, who am I? A Wired magazine calls me the Bitcoin Messiah and the scourge of Wall Street. I'm not happy really about any of that. I, for one thing, my allegiance is not to Bitcoin per se, it's to the blockchain. And I recognized about three years ago that the main event of Bitcoin was going to be this new invention, the blockchain, was going to disrupt a lot of things in our civilization. Unlike Al Gore, I was not here quite for the beginning of the internet, but I was pretty close. And I think I'm the only fellow I know who was both in the sort of early stages of the internet and the early stages of blockchain. I think blockchain is going to end up being a more significant and disruptive force for society than was the internet. I obviously don't like being the messiah of anything because things generally don't end well for them. Scourge of Wall Street. Scourge of Wall Street. I consider myself, I was raised in the holy church of capital markets, so I'm sorry that some people and some feel that I'm the scourge of Wall Street. Uh, uh, two years ago, we, we within Overstock created a subsidiary called Medici Ventures to pursue applications of the blockchain. Uh, one of them concerns blockchain meets Wall Street. And we formed a subsidiary. We bought something called Speed Route, which, which uh, routes 3% of the equity flow on Wall Street. And we, we built a company on top of it called T0. And that's for our blockchain meets Wall Street endeavors. Uh, we decided that the Chuck Yeager moment was going to be the first company that issued a public security on the blockchain. And we had set out two years ago to say we want to be that company. In fact, here in Las Vegas, at a Bitcoin conference just two years and a couple weeks ago, we announced that this was going to be what we were going to do. And I liken that to the first, uh, those old timers who were first trying to get off the ground, and they may have known they needed some wings and a tail, and they had a vague idea of what they were going about, but really nothing, uh, nothing spectacular. But by February of 2015, in our march towards this Chuck Yeager moment, we had developed a, uh, a matching engine and with primitive writing capabilities to the blockchain. By April of last year, we actually had a, a, a uh, matching engine writing to a blockchain, as by, which led us in June of last year, we issued the world's first security on the blockchain. Now, it was nothing spectacular. It was a, uh, a $500,000 bond that I bought myself. So nothing spectacular. But by two months later, it was ready to go to enter a commercial transaction with another party. Uh, that was First New, York, uh, First New York Securities, a hedge fund in New York, very far-sighted guy, Don Mochwiller, uh, bought a $5 million bond that existed. The legal instrument existed only within the blockchain. Again, it was a private security, but it was the world's first private blockchain security not bought by the guy who created it. So this was the first arm's length uh, private blockchain security. By December of last year, Overstock had, so this is all going in on within a subsidiary with an Overstock retail. Uh, and Overstock had, uh, or uh, oh, so we have the advantage of being our own issuer as we create this stuff. We got an S3 through the SEC. Uh, the SEC sprinkled holy water on it last December that said we can issue a public blockchain security. But there's getting that through the SEC and there's actually getting the technology and the alliances built that would let it happen. Uh, but we did consider that a, that was a red letter day. That, that was saying to the world, we're ready to play ball. We're ready to play ball. By March, uh, ComputerShare had signed up as the transfer agent for us to offer a blockchain security to the world. So now it starts getting really productionized and commercialized. We had our transfer agent lined up. By April, Georgeson, and ComputerShare, I'd point out, has 80% of the global market in transfer agencies, so that's a, a 
It was a substantial alliance to negotiate and get formed. By April, Georgeson had signed on to be the information agent, the shareholder services for a blockchain offering. Uh, we had a couple more partners to line up. It took us until September to get a broker dealer signed up and integrated. That's Keystone out of Los Angeles had agreed to act as the broker dealer for a, the world's first public blockchain security. And by just earlier this month, ETC in San Diego agreed to be the uh, clearing brokerage for, uh, for Keystone for this. So we had all the pieces in place. And as I walked up on stage, if everything went well, the announcement went out to the world that last night, uh, our board of directors met and has approved the launch of the first offering for a public blockchain security in history. Yeah. Kaboom. The, uh, the, the nuts and bolts are on November 10th, uh, I think that's next Thursday. Two, two weeks or so from now, there's a, uh, there will be a record date. This is being done as a, as a rights offering. And there's some technical reasons we're doing this as a rights offering. If anyone who wants to take part will have to own the stock by November 7th. Just own some of our common stock by November 7th, which is Monday next. And given our T plus three settlement cycle in America, that means by you will be a record holder as of November 10. And the subscription period begins November 15 and it ends December 6, and if all goes according to Hoyle, and you will see it actually trading uh, in the world on December 15th. This is a, it's a very basic system. This is just a little demonstration of it. It actually all works, all been checked out. We've spent the year wrestling with regulators, and, and actually the regulators have been very productive. And I've said a lot of nasty things about our regulators a decade ago, but I have to say it's been a different experience this time working with them. They understand this is coming and they don't want America to be left behind. And so they have both FINRA and the SEC, and we even had conversations at one point with CFTC. They were all really quite productive, professional uh, folks to work with. And un we decided from the beginning not to mount Gox this. We wanted to do something that met the standards of the American regulators, drive it right down Constitution Avenue, deliver it to the SEC. It's all within the four corners of the SEC regulations. And uh, like I say, that will be uh, that will be trading in December, but the press release went out as I came up on stage. Thank you.